This video is sponsored by Squarespace. What's going on guys, Vincent here from the creative dojo.net. Welcome to another video quick tip. Hope you guys are doing well out there. In this quick tip video, I wanna share with you guys kind of how I animated this kind of like bloopy, droopy, liquid, soft body animation type look within After Effects pretty easily. And I was actually inspired by a video promo that I saw on Twitter here. It was a promo video for this new script on AE Scripts called Soft Body by Motion Desk. And basically it's a script that allows you to quickly kind of create these kind of soft body imitation distortions within After Effects right here. And this actually reminded me of a post I saw on Instagram by Hugh Vu. Um, he kind of created this kind of tutorial breakdown of kind of how he created this really nice, fluid, soft, uh, soft body animation within After Effects right here. It's really nice, very fluid. It's not a full-on tutorial, but it kind of gives you the general idea to kind of experiment. And the whole key is using the CC smear effect. So this tutorial is kind of based off this technique that I learned from Hugh. Um, so mad props to him. Feel free to give him a follow on Instagram. He creates a lot of really cool, interesting content related to motion design, animation, and After Effects. So give him a follow. Pretty inspirational stuff. Again, all the links will be in the video description down below. But basically, we're going to be creating this kind of like soft body, droopy stuff right here. And so I have a tutorial comp ready to go right around here. Um, this is kind of without all the fancy effect, but basically you, I have this little ball, it kind of just shoots out and we have the center ball here just chilling around. Um, so this is kind of like our starting animation and we're going to add our kind of like droopy uh, soft body distortion effect to it. And again, the whole key to this effect is applying something called a CC smear. It's a native um, Psycore effects shipped with an After Effects. And right off the bat, you can kind of see if I move the from point right here, it kind of distorts the shape right here. And if I go ahead and increase the reach, it's going to stretch it even more. And if I tone it down to like negative 200, it's going to distort it in the opposite direction here. And this distortion is based from these two points, the from and two point right here. And then the radius controls how large of a smear it is, right? So you can kind of blend this in. And as you can see, um, by doing something like this, um, you can kind of create some, some really interesting distortions very quickly without having to manually animate the shape paths and whatnot. Um, so this is a pretty cool, simple technique, and I really like it a lot. Um, so we're going to try to kind of automate this a little bit here. So basically what I want to do is I want to parent the from point right here. So alter option click and parent the from property to the position of your object. So in this case, my little red circle, right? So I parented the from property to the position of my red circle right here. And so now my main circle is being distorted by the source of this red ball. So it kind of just gets distorted wherever the red ball is right here. Um, and so that's the kind of idea here. And then I want to parent the two position to the center of my shape. Now you can use the position of your shape, you can use an anchor point or you can use an arbitrary point. It really doesn't matter. In this case, I'm using a circle, so it doesn't really matter. Um, but you can parent this to your anchor point or you know whatever you want. Um, but so just like that. And so now the only thing we need to do is we need to animate the reach and the radius to kind of get this little nice bouncy effect, right? And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just animate the initial part and you know we'll go from there. So I'm gonna go ahead and close all this. We just need to deal with the reach and radius and it kind of helps to um, animate one property at a time. You're gonna notice that if you need to use a negative reach, you might need to increase the radius more than you would like. Um, ideally, you wouldn't really need to touch the radius so much, uh, but that's not what I found in my initial testing here. So let's go ahead and start with a zero reach um, just because Initially, there's nothing, so what we'll, you know, we'll kind of skip that. And right when the ball kind of comes out like this, right? So we we'll hit a keyframe for a reach at zero. And right when the ball kind of comes out, we want things to kind of bulge out. And so we're going to decrease it to a negative value like this. So as you can see, my radius is around 250, 275 right now. And so I'm going to set that reach like that. We're going to move forward and it's going to, at this point, I want it to rebound all the way. And so the whole idea is you kind of want to 
you know, use the fundamental animation principles as if you're kind of like animating elastics or like a bouncing ball, or whatever. So we're going to pretty much oscillate the values backwards and forwards, but each time it oscillates, it's gonna get faster and faster and smaller and smaller. So it kind of decays over time. And you can actually do this using expressions. Like if you look at elastic uh, bounce expressions in After Effects, you can kind of modify it and apply it to this. It won't work with a lot of cases without tweaks, uh, but you can get kind of nifty with expressions and kind of automate this process using expressions. Uh, but in this case, I think it's simple enough. So I'm gonna make it a little bit shorter in time and I'm going to bring the reach back just a little bit. Like, like that. We'll go for a little bit more. We'll kind of just bring it back. And then, you know, keep on doing this, get shorter and shorter in duration. And then finally we'll end it at uh, zero here. And if you play this back, it's probably gonna look hideous because it's all linear keyframes, but you kind of just wanna check the general timing here. And that's kind of, you know, kind of what we're already after right here. So what you can do is actually select all your keyframes, hit F9 or go to animation, keyframe assistant, easy ease, um, easy ease. I'm gonna use my Dojo E script available at creativedojo.net just to apply a quick little medium ease to all my keyframes. And if you look at the graph, you get kind of like this. And again, it's gonna look a little bit better, but it's not gonna look perfect because you're gonna to need to tweak the curves here. but you know, already it's looking a lot better. And so we're gonna hop into the graph editor here. And you know, you kinda wanna think about it logically, right? This is the speed graph. And so what I want is for things to kind of initiate pretty hard and kind of early like this. It's going to pretty much trigger and it's going to ease out a little bit. So it's gonna decay, right? Kind of like elastic, so it's gonna bounce ease out and once it hits this kind of climax point it needs to kind of snap back really fast right so again we're gonna bring this curve a little bit here make a curve kind of like this to where it kind of snaps and then it kind of eases into the next phase reach the apex right here and then it snaps so we're going to shift this a little bit over here um and so you know just kind of think about it here how is this going to act? And depending on what kind of material you're going for and how elastic you want it to be, you can adjust the curves accordingly. So I'm going for more of a kind of like a rubber band type elastic look. So I'm animating it pretty hard to where it's a little bit more aggressive. If you want something more stiff, you would have to kind of space it out a little bit and you know not animate the peak as high. But you know, just something like that, you kind of get the general idea you can even add another pass of decay right here. You can even maybe increase the length just a little bit right here and really decay it out like that. Um, so just a general idea, of course, you would, you would need to play around with the keyframe timing and the curves and everything, but this kind of gives you the general bouncing effect right here. And if you want, you can actually animate the radius as well. So start with a pretty large radius here. Um, and then we'll kind of uh, maybe tone it down from here to like 225. So not only is it kind of bouncing and jiggling, um, it's going to decrease in radius as well as the energy kind of dies down. Just be careful because once you animate the radius, sometimes it kind of changes the reach effect um, because they're kind of uh, interlinked. Um, so just kind of keep that in mind here. I'm going to apply a medium ease as well. Something like that, maybe make a larger radius 300. Um, and so you get a nice little animation just like this. And essentially you would do the exact same thing uh, kind of with the initial ball right here. So for this, I'm going to apply a CC smear effect and we'll do the exact opposite, right? We'll parent the from to the position of the sun here. So I P on the keyboard. We'll parent the from to the position of the sun. And then we'll parent the to to the position of itself or the anchor point 
or whatever you want. And you would pretty much do the exact opposite, right? So in this case, I don't want the radius to be so large. I'm gonna hide the layer, hide the layer controls here. We want to decrease the reach to a negative value. So I'm gonna go ahead and increase the radius to a pretty high value. And that's the only way to kind of get this ball to kind of extend just like this. And so we'll hit a keyframe, we'll hit UU on the keyboard to show all the keyframes. And we'll see the sun keyframe as well. And so we're gonna start off with a pretty intense um, reach and radius for the smaller circle. And then we'll kind of, once it's out like this, we'll go ahead and set the reach down to zero. So it's kind of like a fake 2D motion blur, right? Kind of like cartoon mode blur by um, plugging everything. So you're effectively kind of creating that distortion right over here, just like that. And again, you can always easy ease these keyframes here, apply and ease, and we can delete this keyframe, we don't need that. And so effectively what you have is something like this. And in the original demonstration, I also added an optical glow by Red Giant to kind of give everything a nice little haze right here. And then I also added an overall uh, kind of grain effect, like a grain, animate the grain, and also a posterized time effect as well to kind of give it that choppy uh, stop motion look here. And just like that, you get this really nice fluid, kind of bouncy, soft body motion with an After Effects pretty easily uh, with very minimal effort thanks to the CC smear effects. Before I go, I wanna give a quick thanks to our sponsors over at Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Squarespace is the only platform to make an amazing website, whether it's for your store, online business, or portfolio. They have amazing themes to choose from, fully customized them so you can make it the way you want it to look like without having any coding knowledge required. They have awesome 25 hour support, and best of all, use the promo code DOJO at checkout. You can actually save 10% off your order and support the dojo. So check it out over at squarespace.com slash dojo. Squarespace, the number one place to create an amazing website. So that's pretty much it, guys. This is pretty much how you create this nice little soft body fluid motion effect here. Again, you can always add more objects to this. This is a very simple demonstration. Maybe you have a lot of complex objects, squares, other shape layers, text, you know, video. You can pretty much do this with pretty much anything that you can apply a CC smear effect to. Just play around with it, tweak with it. If you guys do kind of, you know, play around with it and think of a better way to kind of, uh, you know, automate the elastics and all that stuff using expressions, definitely let me know in the comments down below. Again, my name is Vincent Wynn from the Creative Dojo, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys.